All right, today I'm here at the NBC Universal booth at CES, and they are setting us vloggers up with a cool, fast internet connection so I can upload some content today. <laughs> so I'm not so, as far behind as I have been all week. And uh, what I'm going to show you today is the new GM vehicle, the, the new prototypes, the ND vehicles. And I got a ride in one yesterday. Really cool car, concept car. Way out there in the future, but take a look. Here it is. Bree is a, is a lead developer of the autonomous systems on the vehicle. And he's going to demonstrate first for you the smartphone uh, to, to be used to retrieve or to park the vehicle so they can have automated parking and retrieve using the smartphone. Uh, yes, um, it's a presentation now. So we have the smartphone, it's, it's a smartphone. It's an old, you know, normal stuff, smartphone, smartphone, two years old. And we wrote this little application and it has several buttons you can see. It's a path retrieve. Can be open and open close, and also uh, system status, real time status, and also has the e stop. Okay, stop the vehicle. What I'm going to do, I'm going to yeah, initiate the pump, pump it manually. So the vehicle goes into balance and then drive itself and then park it in a designated parking spot here. So that's how parking will break. And then uh, that's what we're going to demonstrate. The, the vehicle that you see it now is in the landed position. It's resting on its front landing wheels, not consuming any energy or power. But um, with the right command from Cree, it will wake up and go into balance mode. And then it will slowly accelerate off and go and find its parking spot. You see it now beginning to go into balance mode. You see the wheels moving relative to the coach when it accelerates. Now imagine it driving down a, a, an aisle in a parking, parking lot and turning at the, the end. And then going up another parking lane. And then it goes into its parking spot, which is a divine GPS location. And then it will uh, turn on a dime so that it's facing forward when we want to retrieve it and then we'll go into landed position by kneeling down on its front landing gear. Yeah. And then it will go into its uh, landed position and park. And that, that completes the first uh, set of features we want to talk about, which were automated parking and retrieval. The next uh, feature we want to demonstrate is platooning. So we will get in one of the other vehicles and drive it to the right starting position behind the blue vehicle. So the two vehicles are in the right starting point and then the vehicles will take off autonomously. We'll have a, a driver in each vehicle but they are there just as a safeguard. They won't be actually driving the vehicle, their hands will be completely free. So Tom is getting into the blue vehicle. He's gonna just be there to show that he's not driving the vehicle. So Cree's just going to manually drive the, the red vehicle up to its starting point, put it in the right place, and then he'll shut it down, go into park mode, and then when both vehicles are in the right starting point, then we'll demonstrate the platooning autonomously. As you can see, these vehicles can be driven both autonomously and manually because it's important that we don't take control away from the vehicle, uh, from the driver, that we provide the driver with a choice. There are times when we want to drive and there are times when they might like the vehicle to drive them. <laughs> so 
So now the red vehicle is going to wake up, go into balance mode, and then the blue vehicle will do the same shortly, and then they will both take off and follow exactly the same path. They're communicating with each other wirelessly and sharing information like GPS location and speed, steering inputs and that sort of stuff. Perhaps in the future, the first vehicle might have a trained driver and the other vehicles would just um, join the platoon and be able to platoon autonomously and then separate when they want to. So you can imagine a virtual bus in the future, perhaps. Or maybe it's a family of four that owns two of these vehicles and during the week each parent has their own vehicle and then the weekend they can travel as a family of four but they can separate when they want. <laughs> so that completes the platooning demonstration in the, the third set of features that we want to demonstrate are uh, collision avoidance. And we'll demonstrate that between an unmanned blue vehicle following a predetermined path, like we demonstrated before with the automated parking, and a drivable or manually driving MV, and also with a pedestrian. We'll demonstrate both vehicle to vehicle collision avoidance as well as vehicle to pedestrian collision avoidance. Really is going to be driving the, the grey vehicle that was designed in our California design studio. He's going to be driving that vehicle manually and he will be intercepting the path of the blue vehicle which is going along its um, predestined path. And you'll notice the blue vehicle will stop automatically when its path is interrupted by the, the grey vehicle. And then when the grey vehicle moves out of the way, it will carry on. To its intended path. So now the blue vehicle is going in balance mode. It's going to be driving autonomously unmanned to a certain GPS coordinate. is going to be driving the vehicle so that it can intercept the path. The vehicles are exchanging information wirelessly and that's what caused the blue vehicle to stop when the, the grey vehicle came within a certain distance.
like the creepier poems I see that are like going away, but in the real world, how would they know if I see it? Well, I guess you have to be some. It's a little bit like creepy, because it's definitely so creepy. So now the um, that demonstrates the vehicle to vehicle collision avoidance that use vehicle to vehicle co communications. The, the last feature that we will demonstrate before you have a chance to ride these vehicles is uh, vehicle to pedestrian collision avoidance. And that does not involve communications but involves sensing. Tom is going to be, or Pri is going to be walking in front of the blue vehicle and they don't have a transponder on them that communicates with the vehicle, although that might be possible in the future. But for the time being, they are not transponding or communicating with the vehicle wirelessly, but the vehicle still avoids colliding with it because it has sensors at the front of the vehicle that can detect pedestrians and stops. So now the blue vehicle goes into balance mode and then Tom is going to walk in front of it. That completes the vehicle to pedestrian collision avoidance. So now we're going to let people uh, have a chance to ride in the vehicle with um, a GM train driver driving the vehicle. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I'm just okay. Uh, kind of documenting this, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, no, no problem. <laughs> and this is this is the propulsion power uh, oh, okay. power button. So you turn it on, and it takes about a few seconds, and then uh, system does some checking uh, during that time. And if it looks fine, this uh, light will illuminate, and that's basically saying, okay, you are ready to go into balance mode now. Oh, okay. okay. So it's basically it goes into balance. I press this one, and uh, we're going to be on two wheel pretty soon. Hmm. Okay. Now we are in this mode, dynamically balanced, we could drive this vehicle, very simple. Uh, this is a forward motion, you just, you know, push it, go forward, turn right, and then turn left, okay? And then when I want to stop the vehicle, I basically pull this one towards me, oh, to stop, okay. okay? That's braking, and this right. is go forward. Oh, so that's okay. all, that's the that's simple pretty control. Pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward, yes. And there's no gear, so nothing, you know, it's here. And, um, it's full electric and ultimate drive-by-wire oh, okay. There's no mechanical linkage. Because of that, it's very responsive because there's no inertia between you know, your drive unit and the, the wheels. And uh, highly responsive. Uh, it also has a, a reverse button here, but I'll show you that one. So if you press this one, it'll go reverse. But you really don't need the reverse button when you do want to go reverse. You just do a 180 degree turn and then you, you know, here we go. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Huh. I can, uh, it can park in a very tight space, as you can see. You know, I mean, uh, you know, it just need this footprint to park, and you know, you can turn and park anywhere you want. 
25 miles per hour is the maximum uh, speed um, but right now we cannot limit it to 10 miles per hour for this parking lot situation and it can also spin um, 180 degree per second uh, right now it's about 60 degree per second this is kind of uh, turn on a dime uh, feature and um, range is 25 miles and uh, lithium ion batteries and uh, they could uh, last 25 miles uh, range and then it takes about uh, six to eight hours to fully deplete it to fully charge for sure. Oh, okay. So. Okay. All right, okay. Great. Yeah. All right, thank you. Oh, thank you. Well, I mean, it's, uh, you've seen the other features that uh, autonomous driving features, yeah. basically GPS based navigation. The vehicle can communicate with each other and uh, get uh, uh, GPS information and uh, you can detect pedestrians and uh, you can detect other vehicles to avoid collisions and so on and so forth. So it can also integrate, you know, you can, you can accept commands from your cell phone as long as you have good cell phone coverage. Uh, well, you get cell phone coverage from here to the tower, but from uh, from your vehicle uh, to the cell phone, right, right. sometimes it's this poor. Uh, yeah. Because it doesn't have enough transmission power in, in, a, in a normal okay. cell phone. Is there a lot of interference here because of like the air drones over there uh, they're yeah. controlling? <laughs> There's a lot of things, a lot of cell phone uh, messages. So, it, you know, and then for safety, we basically wanted to see, uh, because basically you are controlling the vehicle through cell phone, so you've got to make sure you have good communication. If there's poor communication, so I, I normally don't, we don't do that, so that's what basically kicks how come, in. How come it didn't stop the first time when there was the collision avoidance, when the, the gentleman walked in front of it? Well, probably, I mean, the collision avoidance, we have two, uh, two systems. One is the vision system, one is the uh, for low speed, we have uh, uh, ultrasonic sensing. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, for some reason, uh, when the gentleman walk inside, I, it could be lighting. I mean, the vision is uh, very much lighting. Lighting. Oh, yes. okay. It could be lighting, and it could be the contrast is wearing. For a combination of that one, it's, it, the, the vision system didn't kick in. So at the very last moment, um, uh, ultrasonic kicks in. Ha um, as far as safety, have these ever been in any kind of collisions or accidents uh, no, we so haven't far? Had, we haven't had that because there's a, there, are, there are multiple layers of safety here. So we have, uh, of course, not with the pedestrian, but we, let me start with the vehicle. In the vehicle, we have communication safety. I mean, that's that's uh, normally a very robust barrier. Uh, the communication that we use is uh, 5.9 gigahertz uh, DSRC dedicated short range communication. That's a, uh, I don't know whether you've heard of it. Uh, DSRC is a spectrum allocated by Federal uh, uh, Communication Consortium for Public Safety. It's oh, very robust. Okay. I mean, it's, mm. it's not like Wi-Fi or cellular, and it's a reasonably robust uh, communication uh, spectrum. Mm. So, if uh, if for some reason if that doesn't work, and then you have the vision system to kick in, and if that fails, and then you have the the uh, ultrasonic system, there are three layers of safety oh, okay. in the system. So, is that what finally kicked in? Was the third uh, layer uh, over there? Well, when uh, doing the pedestrian, of course, there is no DSRC layer because he's not uh, he's not communicating right. with the vehicle. So, you have the vision and then uh, uh, ultrasonic. Hmm. The vision system didn't kick in for some reason. I fail to recognize this as a pedestrian for you know this vision to vision to work you need to have good good lighting conditions right. and good contrast and so on and so forth but the ultrasonic uh, very last moment is kind of kicks in and stops the vehicle that's what mm. so oh okay. okay all right so he was never in danger then <laughs> yes. okay okay all right thank you all right was, thank this you was, this is great yes okay. thank you I showed him my email Wow, so that was fun. <laughs> That's kind of cool. All right, so that was the Envy car. It was a crazy ride. It doesn't have any suspension, so the bumps, there was kind of bumpy ride. And they're, they're, they say it's going to be out in the future by way out in the future, like 10, 15 years. So, I don't know, um, could be cool. Thanks, uh, subscribe to the feed. We'll see you guys later. This has been a Two Smart Guys production.